learning module two was chapter two, analyzing transactions. So in this learning module, we're going to be talking about what are transactions like. <clears throat> so to start out, uh, we use accounts to record transactions. So the accounting systems are designed to show the increases and the decreases in each accounting equation element. So again, remember the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So each account is either increasing or decreasing your assets, your liabilities or your owner's equity. And that's what the transactions do. They're recording um, increases and decreases. Um, and so each element of the accounting equation is an account. So you have asset accounts, liability accounts, and owner equity accounts. So let's start out with some basic elements. You have the T account. <clears throat> okay, what is a T account? The T account is how we basically um, label the transaction. So the T account has, it starts up here, you put the title. So this would be like your as asset account, your liability account, or your owner equity account. Okay. And that's what we start out with. And then each side of the T is your, where you record your amount. Now determining if it's increasing or decreasing will determine which side of the T you record it to. So always, always, always on the left side, you will have your debits. And on the right side, you will have your credits. Now, I want you to forget what you think you know a debit and credit is because not all debits decrease and not all credits increase. So taking a step back, we're showing the cash account. And this is just an example of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, transactions okay so each transaction is either resulted in a debit entry or a credit entry <clears throat> to your cash account so then basically what you use you'll take the total difference of your debits and your total difference of your credits and then i'll give you your balance so if you add up all of your debits add up all of your credits and then take the difference that's your balance and that is just your basic introduction to the T account and um, how debits and credits uh, align. So you're always going to have your debits on your left and your credits on your right. Now, determining if a debit or credit increases or decreases the account, that's based on what type of account is it. All right, so before we go any further, let's talk about some terminology. So chart of accounts. Chart of accounts is a, a group of accounts for a business entity is called a ledger. A list of the accounts in the ledger is called a chart of accounts. So the ledger is going to have, list all your um, um, activity for your business entity. So all your different transactions are going to be recorded to the ledger. And what's recorded to the ledger are, are the different types of accounts. What type of accounts are there? That's what's going to be part of your chart of accounts. So again, your chart of accounts is going to list all your different asset accounts, all your different liability accounts, and all your different equity accounts. Now, here's some examples of what those are. So here's, now again, assets are resources owned by a business entity. So your assets are what you own. And some examples of assets are your cash, your supplies, your accounts receivables, buildings, equipment, um, inventory. Um, these are all examples of assets. Now, liabilities. Liabilities are debts owed to outsiders, such as creditors. So you have your accounts payable, which is money you owe to other businesses. Notes payable, which might be um, bank loans that you own back to a bank. Wages payable, those are the um, salaries that you owe to your employees and your staff. Interest payable, maybe any interest you owe on any of your notes payables. Now, owner's equity. <clears throat> owner's equity is the owner's right to the assets of the business after all the liabilities have been paid. So for proprietorship, the owner's equity is represented by the balance of the owner's capital account. Um, a drawing account represents the amount of withdrawals made by the owner. So the owner can have the ability to withdraw money from the equity account uh, for personal use. Now let's talk about another group of accounts we haven't really talked about. We've only really mentioned assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. 
Um, but there are other kinds of accounts, which is your revenues and your expenses. So revenues are increases in assets and owner's equity as a result of your selling your service or your selling your product. So um, examples of revenues are like fees earned, commission. Um, if you own property and rent it out, then the, the money you get for the rent is called rent revenue. So revenue represents all the money that you earned through your business um, by selling your services or selling your products. <clears throat> The uh, using, using up of assets or consuming services. Um, so in other words, uh, the money you spend. So, you know, using up your assets, which means, you know, spending your cash um, or consuming your services, which means using your supplies um, in the process of generating revenue is called your expenses. So, you know, you, you hear the time old tells like, you know, you got to spend money and make money. Well, that's what your expenses are. So wages expense, rent expense, those are utilities expense. Any, anything that you have to, you, you, you have to spend money to make or create your product or your service. So all businesses use what's called the double entry accounting system. This system is based on the accounting equation and it requires that every business transaction to be recorded in at least two accounts. So in other words, for every debit, there must be a credit. And the total debits recorded for each transaction must equal the, to the total credits recorded. So the double entry accounting system has very specific rules of debit and credit for recording transactions in the accounts. And again, I want you to forget what you think a debit or credit means because it's completely different in the accounting world. Here's what I mean. So the debit and credit rules for the balance sheet accounts are as follows. Now your balance sheet accounts are the accounts that show up on a balance sheet, which are your assets, liabilities, and your owner's equity. And if you see here, we have it laid out in the accounting equation and basically how you would see it on the balance sheet. You have your assets, you have your liabilities, plus your owner's equity. <clears throat> now, if you look here, it'll tell you underneath each asset, there's a T account. And if you notice, always on the left is going to be your debit and always on the right is going to be your credit. Now, depending on the type of account, whether it's an asset, liability, or owner equity, will determine what increases what. So here, assets. This is always, never changes. This is a rule. Debits always increase your assets. So when you're increasing cash, you're going to do a debit to your cash account. When you're decreasing cash, you're going to do a credit to your cash account. This is always, always, always. This rule never changes. So if the account is labeled an asset account, in order to increase the balance of that account, you will do what's called a debit entry. To decrease that asset account, you will then do what's called a credit entry. If we look over here at liability and owner equity, they're on the opposite end of the equation. So what increases and decreases is opposite. Why? Because for every debit, there must be a credit. So it makes sense the opposite end of the equation will have opposite increases and decreases. So both owner's equity and liabilities are increased with a credit and they're decreased with a debit. So again, you always have to have a credit for every credit, you have to have a debit for every debit, you have to have a credit. That's the double-sided entry and they have to balance. So if I'm going to <clears throat> do a withdrawal from my equity, so I'm gonna decrease my owner's equity, I'm gonna do a debit to my owner's equity, which would then also result in a credit to my cash because I'm also going to be taking cash out of my account. So that's how that would work. So I'm decreasing my owner's equity. And at the same time, I'm decreasing my assets. A debit decreases my owner's equity and a credit decreases my assets. So if I'm going to withdraw cash from my equity account, so I'm withdrawing equity, I'm withdrawing equity. So I have like $5,000 in equity. I'm going to, I'm the proprietor, I'm the owner. I'm going to reduce my equity because I'm going to take that money out. I'm withdrawing it from the bank. Okay, so I'm going to reduce my equity and at the same time reduce my cash. That's how that works. 
um, let's do another example, liability, typical liability accounts, accounts payable. Okay, so I'm going to purchase supplies on account. So I'm gonna increase my supply account with a debit because a supply account is an asset. So I'm gonna increase my assets. I'm gonna increase my supplies. I do that with a debit. But I'm also putting it on account, which means I'm increasing my accounts payable, which I'm increasing my liability. So to increase my liability, I do a credit. So to increase my supply is a debit. To increase my, my accounts payable, which is liability, is a credit. For every debit, there is a credit. Both of those were increasing both sides of that equation. So let's move on. Now you have another set of accounts, which is called your income statement accounts. Again, let's go back. These are your balance sheet accounts, assets, liabilities, owner's equity. And for each type of account is increased with either a debit or a credit. On this side, assets are increased with a debit. On this side, liabilities, owner equities are increased with a credit. Your income statement accounts are the accounts that are only gonna be used to create your income statement, which is your revenue and your expense. Again, revenue is the where we record our, the sales of our services and our products. Expenses are where we record the expenses in running our operations and running our business and creating those products and services. So if you look here, they also have their own T account and they are opposite as well. So if you look here, a debit actually increases expenses where a credit increases revenue. So this is, your, this is what you will be using to record. When you record an expense, you're gonna record it as a debit to your expense account. Why? Because what are you normally spending when you're paying for an expense? You're spending cash, correct? Correct. So let's go back up here. Cash is an asset. So if we're spending cash, we're reducing cash. To reduce cash, you have to do a credit to your cash account. So you would do a credit to your cash account and a debit to your expense account. Let's look at revenue. Revenue is when you're selling your products or your services, you're recording the sale of your product or your services. So you're going to increase that revenue account with a credit. Why? Because what do you normally get when you sell your product or services? You get money. So let's go back up here. A debit increases assets. Cash is an asset. So therefore, you're going to do a debit to your cash account to increase your cash. And then your offset is a credit to your revenue account because you're recording the sale of that service or that product. That is how that works. That is how we do a, what that is what's called a double-sided entry. And that is why the debits and the credit rules are set up the way they are. And then of course, we also have drawing accounts. Um, again, if you are a proprietor or an owner, um, then you are able to withdraw money from your equity account. Um, and within that equity, um, you do have drawing accounts and you have capital accounts. And drawing accounts is where you take money out of your equity and capital investment accounts is where you put money in. And in this situation, we're talking about the debits and the credits and how they work. So um, drawing account is very similar to an expense account and that it is recorded as a, with a debit um, increase. So hopefully I haven't lost anyone there. Um, so I hope you're still there. I hope I haven't lost you. Again, I told you, you're gonna have to forget about what you know about debits and credits and you're going to relearn them and you're going to eventually memorize. Um, first of all, you have to ask yourself, is it, asset, is it a balance sheet account or is it an income statement account or is it a drawing account? So you have to ask yourself that question first, all right? Then after you say, okay, it's a balance sheet account, am I affecting my assets, my liabilities, or my owner's equity? If you say I'm affecting my assets, then you have to ask yourself, am I increasing my assets or am I decreasing my assets? And then once you figure that out, you'll know what account you're debiting and what account you're crediting. With all that said, um, for each of those accounts, they have what's considered a normal balance. So the sum of the increases in an account is usually equal to or greater than the sum of the decreases in the account. Thus, the normal balance of an account is either a debit or a credit, depending on 
whether increases in that blah 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 i know i don't get it either this is a very complicated way of saying um whatever normally increases that account whether a debit increases that account or a credit increases that account um the what the that is the normal balance so look at assets debits increase assets so then the normal balance for all assets accounts is a debit balance on um, on liabilities and owners equity credits increase them so therefore the normal balance for liability and owner equity accounts are credits let's look at the income statement accounts for revenue a credit increases it therefore revenue all revenue accounts will hold a normal balance of a credit and expense accounts. Debits increase expense accounts. Therefore, their normal balance should be a debit balance. That's basically what we're saying here. Um, that's basically what we're talking about here. It's like, what is the normal balance? The normal balance is whatever is used to increase the balance of that account. If a debit is used, then the normal balance is a debit balance. If a credit is used, then the normal balance is a credit. So now we're going to talk about journalizing some actual activity, some transactions. So a transaction is initially entered in a record called a journal, um, and transactions are recorded in the journal using the following steps. So for every journal entry, you, first you want to start by dating the transaction. Most of them will have a date column or a section where you enter the date. This is really important because you want to be able to make sure that you're recording things um, as they happen, and then you also want to record them um, in a chronological order. So dating on your transactions are very important. Next, you're going to title the account. Well, you have to know what accounts you're um, recording it to. So this is where you're going to pull from your chart of accounts. So the title of the accounts is either is to be debited, is recorded in the left-hand margin under the description column, and the amount to be um, and then the amount debited is entered in the debit column. Um, and then, of course, you'll do the same for the credit side. We'll look at some examples of these, um, but you're always going to make sure basically what this is saying is make sure you date your transactions, make sure you put the account that you're going to debit um, on the left side where the debit section goes and record the amount and then make sure the um, account you're going to record for the credit is recorded on the right side um, with the amount that you're going to credit. Um, a lot of times a brief description of the purpose of the account, the purpose of the transaction, and then um, posting reference. So a lot of times posting reference numbers are so that transactions don't get duplicated. So you will actually assign it like a journal entry number. Um, and that is, um, again, it's a reference number, but it also helps ensuring that you're not duplicating transactions as well. So the process of recording um, a transaction to the journal is called journalizing. Um, and then the entry in the journal is called a journal entry. So you're going to, uh, you're going to have a journal. And when you record to the journal, it's called journalizing. And then the, it, um, what you put to the journal is called a journal entry. And then all your journal entries are then recorded to the general ledger. And the general ledger is a list of all the transactions uh, for that business entity. So, um, let's talk about posting journal entries to the account. So then the process of transferring the debits and credits from the journal entries to the account is called posting. And that's kind of when it's really moved from um, the, the journal to the general ledger. Um, the debits and credits for each journal entry are posted to the accounts in the order which they occur, which is another reason why it's very important to um, date um the transaction so that you can get up keep them in chronological order <clears throat> um so we're going to take a brief moment and we're just going to look at a few examples okay so um as i mentioned before posting um, is when a transaction is first recorded to the journal. Um, periodically, the journal entries are then transferred to the accounts in the ledger, and the process of transferring the debits and credits from the journal entries to the accounts is called posting. All right. Um, so this is just an example of what we're talking about. So here's your T account. 
And then here's what an actual journal entry would look like. All right. So first thing we're doing here is uh, prepayments of expenses. Uh, insurance premiums are a great example of a prepaid expense because we normally pay for insurance anywhere from three to six months in advance. And when you pay for an expense in advance, we call it actually a prepaid expense and we categorize them as an asset. So let's go back and think assets are increased with debits. So if you look here, okay, both cash and prepaid are assets. We're increasing our prepaid insurance account. So we are going to record it with a debit. So here on the T account, it's on the left side. And if you look up here on the journal entry, it's listed first, prepaid insurance. And then over here, this is always going to be your debit column. And this is always going to be your credit column. Because if you look here on your T account, it's just like if you were just picking up this T account and placing it over here. All right, debits, credits. So we are recording the prepaid insurance, um, prepaid expenses or assets, we're increasing it because we're paying it. So we're going to record it as a debit to increase that asset account. But of course, what are we using to pay it? Cash. Cash is another asset. So while we're increasing one asset, we're decreasing another. So we are going to record a credit to our cash account, if you look here, for $2,400. And then right here, so, that, so this, is, this is it represented in the T accounts. And this is it represented in the actual journal entry. Once, um, then once we are done with the journal entry, then we would take this journal entry and actually post it to the accounts. And once you post it to the accounts, it then updates the balance of that account. So if December 1st was your first transaction to your um, prepaid insurance, then the balance to prepaid insurance is $2,400. However, um, your cash should have a running balance. So this $2,400 entry will then reduce whatever your previous balance to your cash was. Here's some more examples. Uh, so the posting of the preceding December 1 transaction, which was shown um, earlier, um, right here. So notice that the T account form is not used in exhibit five. So in practice, the T account is usually replaced with a standard four column account. So again, I wanted you to kind of see this up here because there's your T accounts. If you kind of take this over here and transfer it over here, we take the T, top, the T account and we're going to replace it with this four column um, account. And what that four column account is going to give you the date because remember we always have to have a date. Um, and then the description, which is going to be you, you, nine times a 10 year description, are gonna, you're going to pull straight from your chart of accounts. Okay, your chart of accounts are the different types of accounts that your company uses there and the different types of accounts you have asset accounts, you have liability accounts, you have owner equity accounts, you have expense accounts and you have revenue accounts. And you have so those are your main categories and then you're going to have subcategory accounts under each, each of those main categories. All right, so like example, prepaid assurance and cash are both asset accounts. So if you look here, step one, remember, we hit date to transaction, okay? Step two, all right, we list and label the debit and the credit. The debit's always on the left, the credit is always on the right. All right. Step three, we give it some sort of posting reference. And that's and a reference number is just who we can reference back to that entry. And again, it also helps with uh, preventing duplicated entries. All right. And then step. So again, so here and then. So here is the journal entry. Just like up here. So we have dated it, we've given it descriptions, which basically are comes from first chart of accounts. Um, we listed the debit first, the credit second, the debits always on the left, the credits always on the right. And we gave it a posting reference number. Now, 
This is your journal entry. Now, let's show what it looks like when we actually um, post the journal entry to the accounts. So you have your prepaid insurance account and then you have your cash account. So I told you earlier that depending on if there was a previous balance or not, once you post that journal entry to the account, it's going to change the balance of that account. So December 1st was the first transaction to the prepaid insurance account. So it now has a debit balance of $2,400 because there's no other previous entries and no other previous balance. But let's go to our cash account. Obviously we use our cash account a lot more often. So if you look here, we did have a previous balance on November 1st of $2,500. If we look here, we also see another transaction dated November 30th of $2,000, and then another transaction December 1st of $2,400. So, but I want you to notice, I want you to notice with every single transaction, okay, whether it's increasing or decreasing, it is changing the balance of the account. So obviously this little tear right here represents a big gap there. So they're not showing us everything. So we're not gonna be able to balance and reconcile this. Um, but this is just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So we obviously had a um, debit entry to our cash account in, of $25,000. And that gave us a beginning balance of $25,000. Then um, with every transaction, that balance has either increased or decreased. What's going to decrease it? Credits. Credits are going to decrease it. Debits are going to increase it. So if we look here, this $2,000 credit where we spent $2,000 out of our cash um, gave us a new balance of $5,900. But then with the transaction of our prepaid insurance of $2,400, and now reduce that $5,900 down to $3,500. The debits and credits for each journal entry are posted to the accounts in the order which they occur to the journal, again, because chronological order is very important. Um, and then here are the four steps where we talk again. You first you date, then you record the amounts in the proper debit and um, credit entries. And then the um, you want to give it um, posting reference numbers. But then I wanted to give you examples of what we're talking about when we say creating a journal entry and then posting that journal entry to each account. So you create the journal entry to tell you what accounts you're debiting and crediting, crediting, and then when you post them to the actual account, then you're taking that journal entry and you're updating the balance of those accounts. So if you see here, wrapping this up again, just gonna reiterate and um, the process of transferring the debits and credits from the journal entries to the accounts called posting. And then the debits and credits for each journal entry are posted to the account in the order which they journal. They are journalized in chronological order. All right, so move on. Unearned revenue. This is a new type of account. Unearned revenue is a liability account. Um, now, what is unearned revenue exactly? Well, the book says the liability created by receiving the cash in advance of providing the service is called unearned revenue. Okay, basically that means they paid you for something you haven't done yet. That's the simplest way uh, to uh, state that. So in other words, <clears throat> they've paid you in advance. So you've gotten money without providing a product or a service. That's reason that's considered a liability is because, well, that's money you technically owe back. So you technically owe that money back until you fulfill your end of the deal, until you provide that service or that product. And that's why it's considered a liability. Now, once you do what you're supposed to, once you do provide that product or that service, you can then move it from unearned revenue to actual revenue. But until then, it's going to sit as a liability on your books. All right, so let's talk about another one, accounts receivable. This is the opposite end of that spectrum. So reading it real quickly, when a business agrees that a customer may pay for services provided at a later date, an accounts receivable is great. Meaning you have now provided them with a product or service and allowing them to pay you at a later date. So it's kind of the opposite end. 
So you have fulfilled your end of the deal before they fulfilled their end of the deal. A typical transaction is as soon as you exchange product or service for money, it's done at the same time. Like you hand them the product, they hand you the money. You provide the service, they pay you. All right. But in certain situations, you may get paid before you provide the service or provide the product. And that's unearned revenue because you haven't done your part to earn the revenue. And that's a liability because you owe that money back until you fulfill your end of the deal. And accounts receivable, accounts receivable is like you went ahead and provided the service or the product. And you're going to allow that customer of yours, okay, you're going to allow that customer to pay you at a later date. Now, this is an asset because this is money owed to you. This isn't anything you owe to somebody else. A liability is when you have a debt and you owe somebody, all right? This is a situation where somebody owes you money. So now they owe you and you have a claim against that customer. And this is considered an asset. Um, accounts receivable on most business books is a large section of their asset. Um, and it's so huge that we have different um, measurements that we use uh, to determine how quickly we're collecting on these um, receivables. All right, so now, <clears throat> now that we've talked about all these different accounts, all we talked about all the different charts of accounts and journal entries and posting the journal entries to the accounts and updating the account balances. What's an asset? What's a liability? What's owner equity? What's a debit? What's a credit? Once you get all that figured out and once you get all your journal entries, journal entries posted to their proper accounts and all of their balances updated, then you're going to create what we call a trial balance. And all it is, is a list of all of your accounts and all of their balances, whether it be a debit balance or a credit balance. And at the end of the day, if all of your debits and all of your credits equal each other, then at that point, you can consider yourself balanced. Because if you did everything right, for every debit, there is a credit, for every credit, there is a debit, and you updated the balances to all your accounts properly, when you go to list the ending balances of your accounts, um, and create your trial balance and all, and you add up all your debits and you add up all your credits and they equal at the bottom, then you can consider yourself balanced. So the first step that you're going to do is you're going to list the name of the company, the top. So you're going to list your name of the company. Then you're going to list all the accounts from the ledger. And again, these are from your charts of accounts. Um, and the accounts from the ledger, meaning accounts that you've used, then you're going to list them all. And then you're going to enter their debit or credit balance in the debit or credit column of the trial balance. Then you total the debit in the credit columns and the trial balance and verify that the total debit column equals the total credit column. So um, now an unadjusted trial balance is um, distinguished from an adjusted trial balance and a post-closing trial balance. So your adjusted on uh, your unadjusted trial balance is the initial trial balance you create, you, you do when you are initially listing all your chart accounts. Let's take a, let's look at some examples of these. Here's an example of a trial balance out of your textbook, okay? So again, we put the name of the um, company, we go ahead and list it as an unadjusted trial balance because we've made no adjustments to the accounts. This is just straight off of what um, we show after all of our journal entries have posted to the proper accounts. And so we've um, listed all the accounts from um, the ledger. And then whether they have a debit or a credit balance, we went ahead and list it under the debit column, column or the credit column. And then we add up all the debits and then we add up all the credits. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they balance. Now, this is, an, 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 again, an unadjusted trial balance. We'll talk about what an adjusted trial balance and a post-closing trial balance are later. Uh, but this is really important. Why is this really important? Well, first of all, the, for your first is the checks and balances, okay? Accountants love checks and balances. Accountants need checks and balances. So the first thing we're doing here is we're basically checking to make sure that all of our debits and credits equal, meaning we did our journal entries right. Because again, for every debit, there is a credit. And for every credit, there's a debit, and they must equal. So if all of our debits and all our credits balance, then we know we 
did majority of our journal entries correctly. Now, remember we talked about normal balance, whether it's an asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense account, each of those have what we call a normal balance. So let's look cash. Cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, land, office equipment, all of those are examples of an asset account. Assets are increased with debits. So the normal balance of an asset account should be debits. So if you had 20,000 in your credits over here for land, then you know something's not right. And you have to go back and look at your accounting entries, your journal entries to make sure that um, something did not get posted to the ledger correct, incorrectly. Same things for your um, liabilities. You have um, accounts payable and unearned rent. Well, those are liability accounts. Again, we increase uh, liabilities with credits. Then you have your um, equity accounts. You have your capital account and your drawing account. Capital account is an equity account and it's increased with a credit. So we show the initial investment to our capital account as a credit, but we did have a drawing where we drew $4,000 from our equity account and our drawing accounts increased with a debit. So therefore we show the debit. Let's move on to our revenue as expenses. The only revenue account listed here is our fees earned revenue for uh, services provided and revenue is increased with a credit. So it's normal balance should be a credit. And then we have all of our different expense accounts. And again, expenses are increased with a debit. So the normal balance is a debit. So there's different checks and balances you can do to make sure that um, your entries are recorded correctly uh, to the ledger. And that's what this trial balance does. Let's talk about um, more some more errors that could affect the trial balance. Um, so we have a term called transposition. Transposition is when you kind of like get the order of the digits um, out of order. And that's so easy to do, um, especially if you are um, reading really fast or typing really fast. Sometimes your brain can work faster than your fingers. And so you may mean to type um, 542, but you put it in as 452 or 524 because you reversed a sequence of numbers. Um, that's called transposing and that's extremely common um, and it happens more often than not. Um, and then there's called the slide, um, which is the entire number is copied incorrectly, um, one or more spaces to the right or left, such as, um, putting the decimal in the wrong place. Um, that's a really common example of a slide. So you mean to record 542, but you accidentally recorded it as $54 and 20 cents, et cetera. Now, errors that do not cause the trial balance totals to be unequal may be discovered when preparing the trial balance or um, indicated by an unusual account balance. We kind of talked about this already because I talked about how each account has its own normal balance. So um, the example they gave here is a business cannot have a negative supply, meaning it cannot have a credit balance in supplies. Why? Because, well, you know, how do you have negative supply? You can't have a negative supply. So, and supply balance is an asset and assets are increased with debits and you're either gonna have a zero supply balance or you're gonna have a debit um, balance in your supply account, but you can't have a credit balance. That's, so that's just something that tell you that something was reported wrong. So again, you have to pay attention to what those normal balances are for those accounts. Um, if an error has already been journalized and posted to the ledger, then what you have to do to fix it is you have to do what we call a correcting journal entry. Um, so we talked about um, revenues and expenses, like expenses are always gonna be recorded to a debit with a debit. And um, I can never imagine a time when you're gonna have to record a credit to an expense account unless you're doing a correcting journal entry. So in other words, maybe you recorded it to the wrong expense account. Um, maybe you put it to um, supplies and you meant to uh, put it to utilities, et cetera. Um, so then you would have to do a correcting journal entry. And what you do to correct a journal entry is you remove it from the wrong journal 
account. So uh, again, let's use an example of uh, expenses. You recorded it to the wrong expense account. So you recorded it to supplies and it was supposed to go to utilities. So if you recorded it originally with the debit supplies to remove it, then you're going to credit your supply expense account and then debit your utility expense account. And that's basically how you move it. Let's do some examples out of your book uh, for some errors that are affecting the trial balance, okay? So for each of the following errors, consider individually, um, indicate whether the error would cause the trial balance totals to be unequal. If the error would cause a trial balance to be um, unequal, indicate whether a debit or credit total is higher, blah, blah, blah. So let's look at these individually and let's just figure out what's causing it. So in A, it says the payment of a cash withdrawal of 5,600 was journalized and posted as a debit of 6,500 to salary expense and a credit to 6,500 cash. So obviously um, the first thing I'm seeing is we have a transpose in numbers. So the trial balance totals are equal, okay, since we did do a debit and a credit of the same amount, right? So you're not gonna see an unequal amount in your debits and credits, but um, so the trial balance uh, totals are equal since both the debit and credit entries were journalized and then posted for $6,500. But we know they're wrong, but we're not gonna see um, whether or not they're equal. They're not, we're not gonna see that they're unequal. Um, a fee of $2,850 earned from a client was debited to accounts receivable. Uh, for 2,580 and then credited to fees earned for 2,850. Well, um, only one side of that journal entry was the amount transposed and um, um, entered wrong. So um, basically on, in this side of the equation, um, our credits are gonna be higher and our debits are gonna be lower. And then um, our credit's gonna actually be higher by the difference, which is $270. All right, so let's look at this. A payment of $3,500 to a creditor was posted um, as a debit of $3,500 to accounts payable and a debit of $3,500 to cash. Well, well, how did they do that? They did two debits. So the trial balance is definitely gonna be unequal because your debits are now gonna be higher by $7,000 because you basically uh, debited $3,500 twice. So if remember, for every debit, there should be a credit, et cetera. We're not even gonna get into how the accounts are completely wrong. Right, in this equation, we're just talking about the amounts and remembering for every debit, there is a credit and um, the they must equal. Um, and in some situations, they are going to equal, but they're still going to be incorrect um, because um, we did transpose a number, but then we transposed it, posed it with both the debit and the credit. Here, we transposed a number, but we only transposed it on one side of the um, journal entry, not the other, causing the debits and credits to be unequal. Here, we accidentally debited twice. Um, instead of doing a credit, we did two debits, causing our debit side to be um, higher by $7,000. The last thing we're really going to cover is a type of financial analysis, which is called um, horizontal analysis, excuse me. Um, so this is really important. Um, this is a very important analysis to do, and every accountant does this when they're um, reviewing the books. So in horizontal analysis, the amount of each item on a current financial statement is compared with the same item on an earlier statement. So with two statements, so when two statements are being compared, the earlier statement is used as the base for computing the amount and the percent of change. So what does that mean? Let's take an example. Um, let's look at your bank statements, okay? This isn't a real life example of something that you would look at on a um, normal basis. Um, you'll have your previous month's bank statement and your current month's bank statement. And the two things you're gonna compare are your, your balances, right? The balance of your cash. 
Um, so then you can do the same thing when you're comparing your balance sheet accounts. You're going to look at your account balances from your cash, your accounts receivable, your um, liabilities, your equity. You're going to see if how they if they've changed. Have they um, improved with change? Um, how, do you did you see where you need to have improvement? Um, another good comparison is taking your income statement um, and comparing your sales from each month. You know, are my sales increasing? Are my sales decreasing? Um, do I see a trend um, looking at previous years um, sales to current year sales? That's another form of um, horizontal analysis. Um, is my you know my able am I seeing a trend? Am I following the same trend? Um, do do I see where I can maybe improve um, downtrends and um, capitalize on uptrends? All right, so here we've switched back to the um, textbook. And this is just an example of an income statement for Jay Holmes, attorney at law. And if you see here, he has year one and year two. All right, so the first thing he's doing in this horizontal analysis is he's um, looking at the change. Okay, did it increase or decrease and by what percent? Okay, so we look here, his um, definitely his revenue increased and his revenue increased by about 25%. His wages also increased and his wages increased more than 25%. So he's, his wages have increased like about 33%. Um, so this is something you can look at is you can look at um, how much has, you know, in relation to my revenue increased, have my expense, expenses also increased. Um, so the horizontal analysis for um, Jay Holmes indicates both favorable and fa unfavorable changes. Okay, so the increases in fees earned is definitely a favorable change, but as is the decrease in supply ex expense. So we look here. He is more efficient with the use of his supplies. Um, but we do see an unfavorable change um, in his wages because that was more than 25%. Um, utilities and um, rent expense, they all increased right at or more than his fees earned. So he's not necessarily increasing his profit. So that's something to look at. Like, oh, wow, well, you know, um, if you just looked at it at a glance, you would say, oh, you know, I like, I brought in $37,000 more in revenue um, in my second year than I did my first year. How come, you know, um, my net income doesn't really show that huge increase? Well, yeah, kind of also increased other expenses as well. Um, so you kind of do a horizontal analysis to kind of see, well, what in what areas did my expenses increase and did they increase more than my revenue did? Um, here's another one for a statement of cash flows for Apple. Um, uh, they're um, comparing their inflow and outflow cash activity for operating, investing, and financing to see. Um, how well or how poorly they performed with their um, cash flow. So the horizontal analysis of the cash flows for Apple indicates an increase in cash flows from operating activities by 35%, which is a favorable change, but Apple increased the cash use and investing um, by 19%. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. So they have more cash from operating and they took a portion of that cash and invested it. Um, um, and, and so, you know, that's, I, could be really considered a good business practice. They didn't take all of it. They just took a portion of it. Um, let's see here. And it decreased the cash it received from financial activities. So, um, you know, in year one, you're probably going to have a lot of cash inflow from financing activities because those are your starting funds. All right. Um, so you, we're going to see a decrease, not as much um, money coming in from the financing activities of, after year one, because those are your, that was your startup money. Um, so you're going to actually see more, a more outflow because you're probably paying back to your investors. 
60% are paying back the money that they you borrowed. So overall, Apple had a 164% increase in cash for the year, which um, increased the end of year cash balance by nine and a half percent. And you can look here and see um, how all those numbers came up and how all those numbers were calculated and how that can be used to determine um, how healthy the business is operating. So obviously in a cash flow statement, you're going to want the majority of your cash to come from operating activities and not investing in financing. In your one, it's not unlikely for the majority of your cash to come from investing in financing because you need that startup money. But as the years progress, you want to see less and less money coming from that and more money coming from um, operating activities. Let's do this quick example. Um, exercise. You have two income statements from a Coracle company that follows. Um, they didn't break down the expenses. They just lumped up the expenses. So you have your revenue, you have your expenses, and you have your net income. It says prepare a horizontal analysis of the Coracle company's income statement. So let's just go ahead and pop on the answer and look at it. All right. If you look here, all right, it shows that um, there was an increase in fees earned by $35,000, which is a total per percent increase of 20%. Um, but then their operating expenses increased by 22,500, which was a 15% increase. Um, but their overall um, net income did increase, um, giving them a favorable percent increase of about uh, 50%. So I will, you could pause this video at this point and do the math and work the math out um, to see how they got these percentages. Um, but this is just a very simple um, example of a horizontal analysis. So at a glance, uh, we'll just kind of to um, talk about, uh, we talked about T accounts. What is a T account? Um, how do we use T accounts for recording um, activity and accounts. Um, we use them to keep up with the balance of those accounts. Um, those come from the journal entries that we create. Um, we talked about everything's a double-sided entry. So for every credit, there's a debit and every debit, there's a credit. Um, we talked about um, how different accounts hold different balances. You have assets hold a debit balance, liabilities and owner equity hold a credit balance. We talked about revenue and expenses. Revenue holds a credit balance and um, expenses hold a debit balance. Uh, we talked about taking um, everything we did on a journal entry and recording and posting it to um, the accounts. And when we post it to the accounts, that updates the account balance. Once we're completed posting everything to the accounts, then we run um, an unadjusted trial balance to make sure that there's no errors. We looked about how to look for errors in a trial balance. And then the last we did um, a very basic um, financial analysis, which is a horizontal analysis of comparing statements from one period to the next to see um, if the changes are favorable or unfavorable. Um, that is it for chapter two. Um, if you can, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, this was just a really quick uh, glance at the account. I do expect you to read chapter two on your own and complete. Um, it will go through um, more examples. Um, you do also have your homework um, and Cengage that is due on Sunday as well as discussion posts. Um, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I usually respond within 24 hours on weekdays and 48 hours on the weekends.